sông trên cười. President, please be seated. Ông Chunum Mbria, và các mặt to các chúng ta is back in session. Reprise de l'audience. Court officer, please invite two TC. CP 247 and the support staff from TBO, Madame Chai Marilene, into the courtroom. President, good afternoon, Madame Civil Party. Madame what is your Party name? Civil, bon Quel est votre nom? Madame Civil Party, please wait for microphone to go on before you give Madame your statement. Madame, veuillez attendre que votre micro soit allumé pour prendre la parole. Civil Party, la my name civil. is Chum Sammun. Je m'appelle Chum Sammun. Question: When were you Question. born? Quand êtes-vous né? Answer: I was born on the 4th of March 1960. Question: Where were you born? Question: Et où êtes-vous né? Answer: I was born in Prum Trit Village, Chuk Commune, Chuk District, Kampot Province. Question: And what is your current address? Question: Quelle est votre adresse? Answer. My current address is at the Tie Khang Kabong, Andong Khmer District, Kampung Bai, Kampot Province. No, in the province of Kampot. Question. What are your parents' names? Comment s'appellent vos parents? Answer. My father's name is Chum Chien, and as for my mother, her name. Was Pe On. Pe On. Question. And what about your husband? What is his name? Question. How many children do you have Quand est together? De votre époux et combien d'enfants avez-vous? My husband's name is Rutchret. I have Mon five children. Mon mari s'appelle Rutchret et j'ai cinq enfants. President, thank you, Madame Chum Samuel. As a civil Merci, Madame Chum Samuel. You may make a victim's impact statement if any concerning the crimes which are alleged against the two accused. And harms inflicted upon you during the democratic Kampuchea. Under Internal Rule 91 BIS of the ECC, the Chamber gives the floor to the lead co-lawyer to put questions before other parties. And the 
combined time for lead co lawyer and co prosecutors is one session. You may now proceed, a lead co lawyer. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Je cède la parole uh, à ma consoeur, Maître Sovanari. Uh, colleague, uh, Council Sovanari. President, you may now proceed, civil party lawyer, Maître Sovanari. Lawyer. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Merci. President, Your Honours. Bon après-midi, Monsieur le Président. Party to the proceeding. Everyone in and around the bonjour courtroom. Good afternoon, Madame Civil bonjour, Party. Madame I have Partie. some questions for you, and thank you for being here and give your responses. I would like to know where did you live before 1975, and what did you do? Et était votre occupation? Answer. Réponse. I lived in Trapenglian village, dans le village de Trapenglian, Chuk commune Chuk district. Dans le, I was young at dans that le district time. de Chuk. Et j'étais jeune à l'époque. Question. Question. What did you do in 1973? Et quelle était votre occupation en 1973 Réponse. En 1973, j'ai vécu dans la division 11. À ce moment-là, j'avais 13 ans. Et j'ai été demandé de transporter la terre. Et on m'a demandé de transporter de la terre. Rather, I was asked to carry rice. Lawyer, thank you. So when you were 13, you joined the soldiers in Division 11. And where was that division station? Où cette division était-elle postée? Answer. Réponse. The soldier was stationed at Kok Thom district, Kandal province. Question. Question. Who was the commander of Division 11? Comment s'appelait le commandant de la Division 11? Answer. His name was Kao Sam On. Son nom était Kao Sam On. Question. Question. Regarding Division 11, which zone was Division 11 un under? Sous quelle zone la division? Answer. I do not know. À quelle zone la division 11 répondait-elle? Réponse. Je ne sais pas. Question. Could you tell the court why did you Question. join Khmer Rouge at that time? Pourquoi avez-vous rejoint les rangs des Khmer Rouge à cette époque? Answer. Réponse. The reason that I joined Khmer Rouge soldiers is to liberate the King Norodom Sihanouk. Libérer le roi Norodom Sihanouk. Question. Question. You stated that 
at that time you joined the Khmer Rouge forces, and uh, you told the court that you were instructed to carry rice or food supplies, de said the lawyer. And uh, where aliments. did you bring uh, that rice to? Les avez -vous Answer. I was instructed to carry rice. I did not know the name of the village. I had to bring the rice to one village. Je devais apporter du riz dans un village. That village was close to Tul Krosang. Un village proche de Tul Krosang. Question. Could you tell the Question. court the place where you had to bring rice to? Was it uh, the battlefield oui, nous dire which si was uh, going on? Y avait-il des combats? Était-ce un champ de bataille là où vous apportiez le riz? Answer. Réponse. I brought rice to the area battlefield and uh, people from the front of battlefield would come and uh, get the rice. Une zone où il y avait un champ de bataille et uh, des gens venaient du front pour uh, récupérer le riz. ตอมอกคนเนี่ยស្រីតាអ្នកស្រីចាំបានតេឋានៅក្នុងកងពលរបស់អ្នកស្រីឬក៏ក្រុមដែរអ្នកស្រីទៅជញ្ជូនបាយ
Après, was moved to do rice farming at uh, the factory, and later on, I was assigned to ensuite, make a fertilizer. On m'a affecté à la fabrication d'engrais. Lawyer, thank you. Question. And what about next? Uh, what did you do after that time? And where was your workstation? Où êtes-vous allé? Answer. And then I was uh, moved to do rice farming at O Bike Home. Je suis allé faire pousser du riz à O Bike Home. Lawyer, thank Question. you. When you were at O Bike Arm, were you still in Division 11? And -vous toujours partie did, de la the division did the composition in your division change? Votre division a-t-elle changé? Sa composition a-t-elle changé? At that time, Réponse. Division 502 com was combined with Division 11. That is on my division. La division 502 et la division 11 qui était la mienne. Lawyer, thank you. Do you recall then? Question. Who was the commander of uh, division 502? Du du commandant de la division 502? Answer. His name was Mate. Réponse. Il s'appelait Met. Lawyer, thank you. After Question. Division 502 and Division 11 Après were fusion, combined together, division 502 and 11. what was the name of your new division in, and who was the new de commander? Qui était le nouveau commandant? Answer, it was Réponse. Maid who supervised my new division. Qui était à la tête de la nouvelle division. Lawyer, thank you. After Question. Phnom Penh fell on 17 April 1975, were you required to give your biography? Avez-vous dû rédiger une biographie? Answer. I Réponse. did not know at that time. And later on, the mate who was uh, my pas, à supervisor or Et commander tard, told me to go, told me that uh, uh, she went to the cooperative to try to find out uh, about my biography, bi biography. and uh, she told me that I had been linked to the former regime because of my father was a former soldier. Some biography. And uh, after you were found out that you had been affiliated with the former regime, uh, bon, what did they assign you to do a su que vous aviez at that time? Avec régime, que passé? My, my biography, biography was uh, found out. On a connu les détails de ma vie. And I was put in a unit which uh, consisted of uh, members who had been affiliated with the former regime and I was assigned to carry earth uh, for 10 days. I had to work alone at that time because I had been affiliated with the former regime. I did uh, the earth carrying work alone. I did that work according uh, according to their assignment c'est ce qu'ils m'ont dit de faire i did not know whether i did the work correctly i was je ne savais pas si in, je faisais bien mon I travail i was working in uh, one cooperative uh, west je of dans une coopérative uh, pochentong à l'ouest de pochentong
มตรีรัฐบาลสมยกนะ President c o r r e c t i o n please bring some tissue for civil party apporter quelques mouchoirs à la partie civile จะสมอกุลเนี่ยสรีสมอันลอยเออ thank you I would like to go on merci I would like to ask you about one document that the document that you submitted to the court E3/4807 Ia an inkmai is at 0057 89 80 English 00 in that document you stated that from mid 1976 you were relocated to work at Kampongchang Airfield. On this point, I would like to ask you why you were moved to work in Kampong China. Answer: I did not know then. I was told that I had to go to Kampong China and work. Je devais aller travailler à Kampong China. Question. Question. Did they send you alone to work there, or did you go with your unit? Est-ce qu'ils vous ont envoyé seul, ou êtes-vous allé à Kampong China avec votre unité? Réponse. Was sent to Kampong China. Toute l'unité a été envoyée à Kampong China. Lawyer, thank you. Question. You have just stated that after your biography had been collected, you were put in the one new unit, the unit of which had been affiliated with the former regime. Was it the same unit that was sent to Kampong Chinang? Est-ce que c'est cette même unité qui a été envoyée à Kampong Chinang? Answer. I stay in that unit. J'étais toujours I was dans cette unité lorsque l'on m'a envoyé à Kampong Chinang. Question. Question. Could you tell the court all members in your unit had been affiliated with the former regime? Is that correct? Was it only you who had been affiliated with the former regime? Answer: It was only me who was identified as having been affiliated with the former regime. Identifié comme ayant des liens avec l'ancien régime. Question: How long did you work at Kampong Chinang Airfield? Pendant combien de temps avez-vous travaillé à l'aéroport de Kampong Chinang? Answer. I did not know Réponse. at the time. Perhaps it was Je ne pas. three months and five months. I was too young at the time, so I did not know how long I spent time working there. Question. 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 Upon your arrival at the Kampong Chinang Airfield, what did you see? What was the situation like? Pouvez-vous nous décrire la situation? Answer. Réponse. I arrived at Kampong Chinang Airfield at night time. 
Je suis arrivé de nuit. Which I did not know what was the situation like. Je ne the day after I was instructed to go to work et and uh, I could see that canals had already been dug. On avait déjà construit ou creusé des canaux. Question, where was the work site? Could you tell the court? Question, pouvez-vous nous dire où était ce Answer, I did not know where the work site was located. Je ne savais pas où il était. Question. Question. So... Why then you knew that it was uh, Kampong Chenang Airfield? Et comment saviez-vous qu'il s'agissait du chantier de l'aéroport de Kampong Chenang? Answer, uh, Srun, who was my Srun, uh, unit chief, qui était mon chef told me that uh, that place was Kampong Chenang Airfield. Il s'agissait de l'aéroport de Kampong Chenang. Mm. Lawyer, thank Question. you. Who was Srun? Qui était you said you stated that he was your chief. Vous avez dit il Did he tell you more chef? about the fact that uh, you were sent to Kampong Chenang Airfield? And did he tell you why they had to build an airport? That airport. Un aéroport? Réponse. Answer: I did not know. Je ne savais pas. Lawyer, thank you. Question. When you first started work, how many workers were there at that work site? Combien d'ouvriers y avait-il quand vous avez commencé à travailler sur le chantier? Answer. I noticed that there were many workers there, and I could not tell you how many workers were there. There were many of them. Il y en avait beaucoup. Question. Question. Did you know whether uh, the workers were all soldiers and uh, what kind of people were assigned to do the work at si ces gens étaient des soldats? airfield? Et qui étaient les gens qui étaient affectés à travailler? Answer. They were all Réponse. soldiers. C'était tous des soldats. Lawyer, thank you. Question. Why did you know they were all soldiers? Comment le It was because they had. Milita they, they wore military uniform or Portait they had the same uh, normal attire as a uh, normal citizens? Des Answer. Réponse. They wore black attire Ils with des vêtements noirs. cap. Avec une casquette. Lawyer, thank you. Question. Did you know where they were from, uh, which zones they were from? Saviez-vous de quelle zone ils venaient? Answer: Réponse. I did not know at that time. À l'époque, je ne savais rien de cela. Question. Question. I would like to ask about the work that you did at the airfield. Que vous nous What du were que you vous required avez... to do when you arrived at Kampong Chenang Airfield? Quelles étaient vos tâches quand vous êtes arrivé à l'aéroport de Kampong Chenang? Answer. Réponse. Regarding my work, we had to carry swipe, uh, carry lock. A rock and uh, compact du soil. Et de la roche. Some 
lawyer. Thank you. Yes, too. What about working times? Quand est-il des heures de travail? So uh, when did you start work? À quelle heure commenciez-vous les travaux? I did not notice about the time. The unit chief would would tell us uh, to get ready and uh, go to work. And uh, in the evening, we were told that uh, we had to keep uh, our tools properly and uh, go to have meal. And after meal. In the evening, uh, we were told to get back to work at night. I would like to confirm with you concerning the statement or information that I got. Is that correct to say the workers were required to work three times per day in the morning, in the afternoon, and after they had lunch, they had to resume work at night? Is that correct? Answer, yes, that is correct. Question. Question. After you had your dinner, can you tell the court if you recall how many more hours were you required to work at night? Answer. After we had our dinner, we had a little bit of rest. And we had to resume working again, although I did not know the exact uh, hour that we had to start. We continued working until we were told to stop. We didn't have a watch uh, at the time. Question. On the issue of food ration, you, after you woke up, you had to uh, go to work early in the morning. Were you given food for breakfast? And was the food ration for lunch and dinner sufficient? And uh, there was no breakfast given to us at all. For lunch, we were given cooked rice mixed with uh, corn. That is, uh, two cans of cooked rice mixed with ten corn, ten cans of corn for the group, and it was not sufficient at all. As for the soup, it was soup with some spicy herb or some morning glory. I never saw any feast in the soup. Question. You said uh, the daily food ration for your group was two cans of rice and ten cans of corn. Does it mean that uh, this food ration covered your lunch and dinner, that is for the whole group? And uh, yes, the ration is for both lunch and dinner. Oui, la ration comprend tant le déjeuner que le dîner. Question. Is it correct Question. that this food ration is for your entire group? Actually, how many members in your group who had to share this food ration on a daily basis? Combien de personnes devaient se partager cette ration alimentaire quotidiennement? Answer. Réponse. 
In my platoon, there were 36, section, 33 uh, people. 33 However, there were three groups, and uh, these are uh, platoon, and the ration I mentioned was for this 11 member group. Était pour ce groupe de 11 personnes. Pour un groupe de 11 personnes. Question. You just testified that you had to work during the night. Question. Were you given any supplementary food besides lunch and dinner for the hours that you worked uh, during the night? Answer, so, no, there was no uh, supper or supplementary food. Question. Now I'd like to touch upon the issue of uh, sanitation. Can you uh, tell the chamber about the uh, food or water sanitation? Would you provide it with uh, clean drinking water? And uh, no, the water we drank was uh, unhygienic as we had to drink water from the creek. Depuis la rivière. Question. Did workers uh, have to bath themselves in that uh, creek Question. Et les and drink the water from the same source? Dans cette rivière et boire également à partir de cette rivière? Answer. Indeed. Uh, that same stream or creek was a oui. place where we bathed ourselves and we drank. Nous l'avions dans cette rivière et nous buvions également l'eau de la même rivière. Question. Now I'd like to ask you about the uh, resting time. During the period of three to five months that you worked there, were you allowed to, to rest? For example, how many days were you allowed to rest per week or per month? Was there such an arrangement in place? And so, no, there were no resting times. There were always working times or literally attacking time at uh, the site. Unless you fail sick, that is, you fail dizzy or you fail fatigue from your monthly menstruation, otherwise you would not be allowed to rest. Question. Allow me to give an example. For instance, uh, for the morning, you had to go to work, that is, uh, uh, your group. Was there any brief uh, resting time for the morning session? And what about the afternoon session? Was there a short break? And so uh, during the working hours, there was no uh, break at all. We could only rest a little bit at meal time, then we had to return to work again. Question. Question. What was the arrangement for your sleeping quarter? Could you enlighten the chamber? Quelles étaient les modalités pour dormir? Answer. At night time, I saw a ready-made sleeping quarter in a form of a, a long le building, soir, il y avait un long bâtiment, and un they built actually a, a stack where we could sleep on. Et il y avait there was no sleeping mat or mosquito net. We simply slept on the dead floor or rack. Question. 
at your sleeping quarter, Question. were you annoyed no, by toi. bad bugs or insects or mosquitoes? Y avait -il, uh, des and so, yes, des there were, uh, and for that reason, we gathered three leaves uh, and burn, burn it in order to, uh, to have the smoke catching away the mosquitoes. La fumée chasse les moustiques. Question. Question. Did the management on site uh, take any measure que sur le site, uh, to prevent la or to eliminate those insects or mosquitoes from the working site? Ces moustiques du site? And so, no, I Et never pense. saw any measure taken non, regarding this matter. Question. What about the personal hygiene? Question. Et en est Were de you or your peer given soap or vous detergent? À vous ou à vos pères, du savon, du or détergent? if they did not provide you with this necessity, were you allowed to have your own? Et si tel n'était pas le cas, alors aviez-vous le droit d'avoir votre propre savon ou Answer. détergent? We worked and after work uh, we had to nous bathe ourselves and there was no soap or whatever nous laver, il avait nothing pas de at all savon, ni rien rien du tout. we sometimes had to use Parfois. the dry bath from fruit in order to uh, clean our skin, and many of us uh, were infected by uh, lice, both on the head and on our skin. Le corps et nous avions des poux tant dans les cheveux que sur la peau. Question. During the period that you worked there, who made Question, the work assignment the for your group in terms of daily work quota? Who made that determination? Votre Qui fixait les quotas? And so I did not know uh, anything about the uh, work assignment for the group. Je ne I bien only carried du the earth as I was instructed to do, that is to carry the earth to, to build the, the uh, road at the work site so that site. the road could be later enfin compressed. But I had no idea about the work quota. Je ne rien des quotas de travail. Question, so Question. you did not know about uh, the daily work quota. Donc vous ne saviez rien des quotas quotidiens. Did you experience any blame uh, from your superior? That's your team, for example, or your group did not complete that uh, particular day work quota? Pas le quota qui lui avait été And so, uh, no, it uh, never happened. Non, cela n'a jamais été le cas. Question. Question. During the time that you work there, that is uh, morning session, afternoon session, and uh, sometimes night session, were you allowed to talk to other peer workers within your group? Or were you allowed to talk to other workers in the different groups? Dans le groupe, dans and so, no, we were non, prohibited non. from speaking to nous one another and we had to concentrate on working. Nous nous sur le Question. What about the freedom Question. of movement? Were you allowed to move away from your assigned location to a, another location? Vous rendre à un autre endroit. 
librement. Pouviez-vous aller d'un endroit à l'autre Réponse. Non. Our movement was restricted. The only movement we could make was from where we stayed to the work site. Qui nous qui nous était autorisé était d'aller de là où nous dormions à l'endroit où nous travaillions. Question. Question. So you were not allowed to move freely during the working hours. What about at night time? That is, when you were off work, were you allowed to move freely and were you allowed to speak to your peer workers? And so, no, uh, not even during the night time. We were not allowed to, to move freely. After we returned to our sleeping quarter, we had to rest there. Et nous y reposer. Question. And during the time that Question. you were there, was there any time that uh, it rained? And if there is the case, were you allowed to stop temporarily while it was raining? d'interrompre temporairement votre travail. Answer, no, Réponse, we had to non. work uh, although it was raining. Nous devions continuer malgré la pluie. Question. How many times did this happen that is you were working while it was raining? Question est combien de fois avez-vous dû travailler alors qu'il pleuvait? Answer. To my recollection, it happened only uh, one time. D'après mes souvenirs, cela n'est arrivé qu'une fois. Question. While it was raining, were you able to seek permission to stop Étant dit work for a while? Avez-vous le droit de demander la permission de cesser ou d'interrompre votre travail pendant un moment? Answer. We were not allowed to stop. Réponse. Nous n'avions pas le droit de nous arrêter. Question: Were you given any reason that you were not allowed Question. to stop uh, while it rained? Et vous a-t-on donné une raison? Vous a-t-on dit pourquoi? Vous n'avez pas uh, no, de they did not give us any reason to, because non, they presumed that we had to continue working under the rain. Please turn on the microphone, uh, lawyer for Veuillez civil parties. Allumer le micro de l'avocat de la partie civile. Question: Were you Question. provided uh, necessities while you were working, for Donnez example, a hat or a raincoat uh, to protect you from the rain? Un chapeau ou un imperméable afin de vous protéger de la pluie. Answer. No, we were not given uh, such necessities. Réponse. I non, only had a cap, which was uh, barely enough to protect my face. There was no hat, uh, no raincoat given to us. Question. During the period that you worked there, were you instructed to attend a, a livelihood meeting? And if so, what, how it was organized? And what was the content of such meetings? Answer. The meetings were held Réponse. and the main gist of the uh, meetings were for us to strive to work harder to achieve the work quota and nothing else was the main focus besides this one. Question. And during those meetings, was there any mentioning of uh, the work plan from the upper level? And réunion, was there a session where you had to criticize your peer and where your peers would criticize you? Answer, no, there was no uh, 
criticism or self criticism. As I said, the main focus was uh, to try to work harder each day. Le principal message était que nous devions travailler avec plus de zèle chaque jour. Question. Due to the nature of hardship of the work on site, the lack of food and the lack of hygiene, did you ever fall sick? Or did you observe that any of your peer workers fall sick? And uh, I did not know about uh, other workers, but I myself uh, had a an infection on my hand, Moi, and that I could then lick the sword. I were instructed to actually to put the sword into the baskets for other workers to carry away. Question. And while you were sick, was there a medic on site? Were you provided me with any medicine for your treatment? Or were you allowed to rest? Answer. We were given a rapid drop pellet. And I actually asked uh, for permission to rest, but I was not allowed, as I was told that I was sick only in one hand, and I could, I could, I could continue working with the other hand. Question, during the few months period that you worked there, Question. What benefits did you receive from your direct uh, supervisor or from the management of the airfield work site in exchange of your hard work? And uh, there was no benefit given to me at all. Rien du tout. Je n'ai reçu aucun bénéfice. Question. Let me go back to the time that you were assigned to go and work there. Question. Could you refuse to go to the airport or work site? Or did any of your peer workers refuse to go? Answer. No one dared to refuse. Réponse. Personne n'a osé refuser. Question. After you completed your work at the airport, uh, Kampuchnang Airport uh, work site, were you assigned to work elsewhere? And if so, where? And what kind of work were you assigned to do next? Answer. After I concluded my work at uh, Kampong Chinang Airfield, my company was uh, transferred uh, to go to Phnom Penh to, to carry bricks and to carry them onto the train wagons, and the train will transport those bricks to Kampong Chinang. Question. Could you uh, tell the court about Question. the hardship of carrying uh, bricks onto train wagons for the transportation to a functionnaire? What kind of hardship uh, did you face? Answer. Réponse. My 30 member platoon was assigned to uh, carry bricks and put them onto train wagons. Our, our fingers were bleeding at times as the trial, as the bricks were still hardly uh, 
taken from the oven. We had to do it uh, urgently as it was needed for the uh, Kampong Chenang project. Question. I like now to touch upon another topic, as you mentioned in your supplementary information form, that is EC slash 4807, in, on page with Khmer and 0057-8979, and in English 0084-6968, and in French 0057-8977. You uh, mentioned that in around 1978 you were, you were forced uh, to get married. Could you elaborate a little bit further on the fact that you were forced uh, to get married? Answer. In late 1978, I was forced to uh, marry a man in a five-couple wedding ceremony. I did not know the prospective uh, husband at all. We were asked to sit on one side, while the men were asked to sit on another row, opposite, opposite us. We were asked to stand to hold hand and to make a resolution and then to return to our respective uh, sleeping quarter. When I were forced to get married, I refused. And I was threatened that if I were not to do so, I would never date a man throughout my life. If I was, if I was caught smiling at a man, I would risk being killed. So I was scared. Although I did not love that man, I had to force myself to marry him. And after the marriage, we were asked to, to go to a, a, a sleeping quarter, that is our room. My whole body was uh, trembling. And I, I was very afraid. And I told him, please, uh, don't do anything to me. And the man did uh, not do anything to me. I was uh, fortunate enough for that. Then I heard the footsteps outside the room. I began to be uh, trembled again. Question. My last question regarding this topic is the following. Are you still living with the man who was uh, your husband as organized by Anka at the time? Answer, no. Three days after the marriage, we separated. Council, thank you, uh, Madame Civil Party. I thank you for answering my question. And Mr. President, I am done. President, thank you, lawyer for civil parties. The Chamber now would like to hand the floor to the Deputy Co-Prosecutor to put questions to the civil party, and you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Madam Civil Party. We only have a few minutes, so uh, I'd ask that your responses be as brief as possible to the questions that I have. I'd like to start by asking a couple of questions on the topic that you were just addressing, your marriage uh, during the Khmer Rouge period. You mentioned uh, that um, following your marriage, uh, you returned to some sort of dwelling 
with your husband, uh, indeed at your um, supplemental civil party application, it's E3 slash 4807. You said the following, quote, after eating a meal together, each of the couples went home. At dusk, well-armed informers came right into our homes to check whether or not we were getting along with each other. Even after marriage, we did not have sexual intercourse. I told my husband to keep it a secret because we were both in the same boat. When the regime ended, we did not live together." Close quote. Can you explain a bit further what you me meant when you said that well-armed informers came to check whether you were getting along with each other? Venez vérifier ce qu'il, si vous vous entendiez bien ou pas. There were measures who came to eavesdrop on us. I did not know whether these militias were armed, as I did not see them. I only heard their footsteps. Simplement entendu le bruit de leurs pas. And what were they trying to hear? Do you know when they were eavesdropping on you? Question. Et savez-vous ce qu'ils essayaient d'entendre alors qu'ils écoutaient aux portes? They wanted to know whether we consummated the marriage. And can you explain? why you thought Question. you had to keep it a secret that you had not consummated the marriage with your husband. Because I was afraid that they knew Peur il, for that reason le I told him to keep it a secret. Je lui ai dit de le secret. I was a letter of having an affiliation as both my father and my stepfather were former servants of the Lonnol regime. Du regime de and what did you fear Question. would occur if they knew that you had not consummated your marriage? Que pensez-vous? Que pensez-vous qu'il se serait passé si vous s'ils avaient su que vous n'aviez pas consommé le mariage? In fact, we did not consummate our marriage as I was afraid of him. Of course, we, Cambodian girls, would not willingly give ourselves to the men that we just knew. And for that reason, my body was uh, trembled, and I actually begged him uh, to keep a secret that we did not consummate our marriage. I understand. Perhaps I was not clear in my question. What I'm trying to find out is why were you afraid to the point that you felt you needed to keep it a secret that you had not consummated your marriage? What did you think would occur if the Khmer Rouge discovered that you had not consummated your marriage? Answer, I did not know what would happen if they found out. At that time, I told my husband that I was scared after the marriage, and I told him to keep the secret that we did not consummate our marriage. One final question on this topic. Do you remember Dernière who it was that led your Vous marriage ceremony? A fait, a présidé à cette cérémonie de mariage. Réponse. Answer. It was uh, my unit chief, mon mate, chef unité, who met. arranged the marriage for me. Qui a organisé ce mariage? And did Met also lead the ceremony, 
or did he just arrange the marriage? A-t-il, est-ce que Met a-t-il organisé le mariage, mais aussi, était-il aussi président de la cérémonie? Réponse. Answer. He paired me to with my husband. C'est lui qui m'a choisi mon mari. And after he paired you with your husband, and there was the ceremony with the five couples, did he also lead that ceremony in which you and the five other couples were married? Has he presided at that ceremony? Réponse. Answer. After he paired us up, oui, après, he euh, was also in the, the marriage. Il a officié marriage. Thank you. I'd like to move now uh, to ask you about uh, your uh, how, how it was that you came to be um, in Division 502. Uh, in uh, the rice fields uh, and then were subsequently moved to the airport work site. Uh, you stated in your supplementary application E3-4807, this is at ERN 0, English ERN 0, 0, 8469-68, French 0057-8977, Khmer 0057-8979, the following, quote, I was transferred to Old Bekam in Phnom Penh to work in rice farming because of my bad biography. This is because my father, Chung Chien, was a policeman under the Sihanouk regime. In addition to that, my stepfather, Lo Chia, was a Lan Nol soldier. Close quote. Is that correct, uh, as you stated um, in your supplementary application, uh, and as you clarified a bit in questioning this afternoon, that after you provided a biography and it was discovered that your uh, father and stepfather uh, had connections to the Sihanouk and Law Nol regime, respectively, that you were transferred to Al Bakam to rice farm. Answer. It is correct. They found out that my father was a police, a former policeman, and that my stepfather was a former soldier. And after they found out, they sent me to Obak Om. And did they ever tell you, or did you ever have an opinion about? why it was that you were considered to have a, quote, bad biography, close quote, because you were related to a former Lam Nol soldier. Answer. Could you repeat your question? Absolutely. You stated uh, in your supplemental application uh, that you were transferred to El Bekom, quote, because of my bad biography, close quote. Why was it that simply because your father was, or your stepfather, uh, was a Lan Nol soldier and your father was a Sihanouk policeman that you were considered to have a bad biography? My fathers were related to former regime, and it was said that I had a bad biography. Madam Civil Party, also in your civil party, uh, uh, sorry, in your civil party application, 
c'est-à-dire um, cette fois-ci dans votre demande de constitution de D22-1067, uh, vous avez dit sur le sujet de votre transfert en Bacom, quote, « Le Khmer Rouge, d'ailleurs, Categorized me in a group of people who had tendencies, so called, as enemies, relatives. They assigned me to farm there since I was regarded as a prisoner. Close quote. Is that correct? That after they knew of your biography, the Khmer Rouge regarded you as a prisoner? Après avoir lu votre biographie, les Khmer Rouge vous considéraient comme une prisonnière. Answer. They said I was a prisoner. Oui, ils ont dit que j'étais prisonnier. And to the best of your Question. knowledge, did you continue to be considered a prisoner vous when considéré you were transferred to the Kampong Chenang vous Airport comme une prisonnière worksite? Lorsque vous avez été transféré au chantier de l'aéroport de Kampong Chenang. Answer. They, consid uh, they continue to consider me as a prisoner. Toujours considéré comme prisonnier. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I see my time is up. Merci, Monsieur le thank you, Madam Civil Party. Merci, Madam La Partie Civile. So, my look. Le Président. President, thank Merci, you. Monsieur le Procureur. Mr. Co-Prosecutor, it is now a convenient time for a short break. The Chamber will take pause. the break from now until nous prendrons donc une pause jusqu'à 15 heures. Suspension d'audience.